follow-up video to the uh, peas with pasta or the peas and bacon with pasta um, because I can do better. I wasn't 100% happy with it, so we're going to do it again. So uh, there's about 100, 150 grams worth of onion, which I've sweated off in the bacon and uh, the bacon fat. So about 100, 100, 125, 100, 125 grams uh, with the bacon which I've cooked off in the pan, got it crispy, that's come out of it, uh, which then I cooked the 100, 125 grams worth of bacon in. Uh, just, to loose, uh, just to soften it slightly, and then we've thrown in 200 grams of frozen peas. They're just the, I'm looking around things, they're just the cheap ones, um, because we're just fucking around. And then, uh, so the same process as, as the other one, but I, I pureed the peas. Uh, and it kind of looked a bit like um, pea and ham soup. It kind of lost its vibrancy and colour. So I kind of thought what we'll do is we'll just uh, smash the peas up a little bit rather than pureeing them. But same kind of process. So, it's going to be penne pasta again. So, how much penne pasta have we got? Penne. We've got 350 grams. We're at 400 grams last time, I think. Uh, so that's a slight change, and then we've got some hard Italian cheese. I'm not prepared. I'm kind of doing this as I go along. Things are still in the fridge. I've just got in from somewhere. Well, no, I'm just getting from the supermarket from buying some more hard Italian cheese because I'm not prepared. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're adding some water, and we're just going to cook the peas so they are soft, and then we can puree them up and we're going to use that water in there that's going to have the bacon flavour and the pea flavour and the onion flavour and the lard flavour that's what we're going to cook the pasta in and um, we're going to cook it in the new method of cooking pasta it was new to me uh, which is a little bit of water sorry that's just the lid of a container so uh, with a little bit of water uh, cook it more like a risotto the starch comes out of the pasta uh, and then we get a better sauce uh, for making um, uh, things like cacio pepe I'm sure, that's, I'm sure that's how you pronounce it. And um, the other uh, Roman uh, pasta style dishes uh, where, that are a little bit frugal. So like your carbonaras where it's kind of based on pasta water. But the problem is um, the pasta water that you use in restaurants has had lots of pasta cooking it, cooking it throughout the day. So it's not kind of like a proper representation of the pasta water you've got at home pasta water that they've got at home has only had one lot of pasta cooks in it so there's not that much starch in the pasta water so by doing this method which we're going to do today and we've done before we actually capture capture more uh, starch uh, in the water that's going to be used to make the sauce it breaks all the rules of pasta um, but supposed to have lots of water with pasta um, I'm not going to cook it that way um, as, a, as a kind of way around it we could how could we? Uh, yeah, we could use more pasta water from the big pot of pasta and we could reduce that down um, and th therefore concentrating that starch in the pasta water. But that seems like a, a, a long way around to kind of go to do things in my eyes. So we're not going to do that. Uh, and then we're going to need some hard Italian cheese as well. So we'll just cook that, just sell this off. And then we'll drain them off, give them a squish. And then we'll, um, we'll cook the pasta in that water. So the pasta will take on all the flavour of those things that are in that pasta water. So I'm just grating some cheese off camera. It's just cheap Italian hard cheese. Uh, the one I bought today is that grand thing with Jagio. I don't know what it, why, what it is, or what it's made from. I haven't looked at the packet. I'm not going to put it on cheese. I just know that it's hard Italian cheese. And that's what we want, but not too hard, not the type of hard that's been in the fridge for far too long and gone harder than a boot sole. Well, if, you're, if you're from around here, from where I'm from, boo it, a boo it sole. Um, so you don't want it too hard because you want it to melt into the sauce. So a kind of a young hard cheese is preferable in my eyes. Um, and I'm certainly not skilled enough to use a, a hard cheese or to make things in the proper way because even though this is quite a straightforward cacio e pepe and those type of things are, are kind of quite a straightforward thing to do um, they're actually kind of 
quite difficult. So, I'm always making, making things kind of trying to make things easier and cheaper. So, a little bit longer on the page. Certainly going to need some salt. So, we'll add that now. I'm certainly going to need some more water. So, I'll boil a bit more water. Just in the kitchen, nothing special. There's no fancy water or anything like that. Just pass it away. And I need to weigh the cheese. I think I said 50 grams before. I can't remember if I said 50 or 75. Uh, we're just, we're nearly at 50, so. We'll do 50 to start off with, and if we need to add a little bit more, we need to add a little bit more. Yes, it was. It was 50. It was 50, I'm sure. I'm trying to think back of... I had some, a grated extra, and then there was some in the cupboard, and then I used that at the weekend to make the pork rajol. That's okay. So, 50 grams of cheese will be sufficient. That's right, kettle's boiled. I need... That. Those are off camera, by the way. The thought of the camera being in front of me and everything being around me. Ugh, be horrible. Never mind. I don't even like my picture taken. So, how are we doing with this? There's going to be too much peas as well. That's all right, leave it in front of the bit more salt. Yeah, so I think this amount of peas that would do four people. Uh, 400 grams of pasta is two portions-ish. So this amount of peas would actually need about 800 grams uh, worth of pasta for four good sized portions. But maybe a little bit more bacon. So maybe, this is this is for me writing down in the in the description later on, uh, more than anything else, uh, talking through things. So uh, I'd say, yeah, probably going to need double the recipe up. So it's going to be like um, how much bacon? Yeah, so it's going to be about 100, 150, 200 grams of bacon, uh, 100 grams worth of cheese, uh, 800 grams worth of uh, penne pasta. Um, or macaroni or, or um, orecchietti orec orec uh, or something along those lines could make it with spaghetti as well but not today so are these nearly ready they've been in the three trees for ages finished last year to be honest still need a bit more salt i think we need some more water than that that's nearly there Nearly there. So I've got this there. Did I, did I write everything down? Yeah. 200 grams of yeah, so for, for four, four portions, which is 200 grams worth of peas, 125 grams worth of um, onion, 200 grams of bacon, 100 grams of cheese, 800 grams worth of uh, pasta. Penne in this case, because it was cheap in the supermarket. So. Are these going to be cooked now enough? Because I feel I'm waffling. Yes, those are cooked. So, pea and bacon is a classic combination. French cooked bacon, well, lard under bacon with peas, and it's delicious. And in the UK, there's pea and ham soup. So, a classic combination. So, water back in the pan. It's going to have all the fat from the peas. It's going to be a little bit salty. Temperature up. Need some more water in there as well. So it's going to have all the flavour from the peas, all from the onion, all from the bacon already. So it's going to be full of flavour. And then pass it straight in. Oh, it's going to have. It's got a little bit of a lard in there as well uh, from the bacon, uh, which is going to stop it. When you're cooking small amounts of pasta, uh, what tends to happen is the water wants to bubble up. Need more water in that. Uh, it, it tends to, the starch of the pasta wants to make it bubble up. 
Um, but because we've got a little bit of lard in there, I'm going to put some more in. Because we've got a little bit of lard in there, it'll stop it from falling over. We'll just put a little bit more in because the bacon wasn't particularly fatty. Really, well, not in the same way that. Um, for carbonara and cacio pepe, you know, you're supposed to use guanciale, which is pig cheek, and it's delicious. It's very fatty. I've got a piece. Made it. Made it ages ago as an experiment, and it's lovely. There you go. So that's my homemade <coughs> Grand Charlie. Uh, not from particularly fatty pigs. Um, I don't know which pigs were really fatty. It was just pig's head that I got from my from my uh, meat supply, a butcher, uh, and it was the, the pig's head for cheap. And I was just like, oh, let's have a go at making some Grand Charlie. So there we go. Lovely lots of bits of fat, not so much meat, um, but kind of a proper. One of those things, I suppose, I don't know how it came about. I don't know if it's a um, intentionally made out of pig's cheek because uh, they knew that's where all the flavour was and all the fat was, or it's a case of uh, it was made, Grand Charlie was made out of um, pig's cheek because it's essentially a poor person's um, bit of bacon. Um, so I'm not entirely sure. I'm not entirely sure. So. Oh, I've got from there. So, it might just be a happy accident. You generally find in, in life things like uh, uh, the peasant dishes tend to be the ones that are most, most flavour. Like um, when you're cooking, you know, like the cheaper cuts of meat, as long as you cook them properly, have all the best flavour in them. Uh, because you cook them long and slow, they've got uh, more flavour because they uh, develop flavour because they move a lot more than the other bits of animal which are tenderer but haven't got as much flavour so uh, poor people's food tends to have a lot more a lot more flavour to it so I don't know if the I haven't looked into the Grand Chalet, but I don't know if it's a uh, purposefully um, made or it was just a happy accident and poor people kind of like oh this is good as this we'll just keep we'll keep our we'll keep our mouth shut about how good this is uh, so the price of pig's cheeks doesn't go up through the roof so peas with the onions we'll give them a smash because I don't want whole peas in the dish. Because I think that'll be a lot of rubbish. Uh, oh yeah, we talked. Uh, yeah, we talked about um, Eddie Eddie Izzard's Star Wars joke about Darth Vader going into the Death Star canteen, and it was penne pasta uh, with peas, and he was. I mean, they all rant about it. So that's why. So peas work with bacon, and peas work with penne, because Eddie Izzard made a joke about them. So, not mashed up too much. So just like that, we're going to have some flavour and some bite to them, and it'll be a little bit more interesting. So a little bit looking more like a risotto, rather than like a pea puree. It's not what I want. So, as you can see, already the starch is coming out of this pasta water. Well, it was cloudy before we put the pasta in, but uh, because we were uh, cooking the peas and the onions and there was fat in it and the fat emulsified into into the what we call it, into the sauce. So this is going to take a little while. So I think we'll pause here, uh, not because I've run out of things to talk to, obviously, um, but because uh, you don't need to see this bubbling for 10 minutes and me rabbiting on about things uh, and I could do to get my swimming trunks out of my swimming bag and uh, get them up somewhere to dry along with my towels as well and a bit more water in there so as you can see it's already started to thicken up because that sauce so that's going to be lovely when we could just add the cheese to that and it would form a sauce in fact uh, I've already had an idea for that I need some more water in that as well so I need to boil some more water and I need to do some other things. So we'll pause here and we'll come back when the pasta is at al dente and then we'll start throwing things together. Right, we're back. The pasta has now got to the stage where it's just about al dente. There is, most of the cooking water has gone, but what we're left with is a gloopy, glutinous liquid, which is going to what's going to cut, form our sauce. So. Heat off 
because there's now going to be enough heat in the pan to um, heat up the peas, the bacon and to melt the cheese. Also we don't want uh, excessive heat when we add the cheese because what happens is uh, that it will um, split the cheese. Um, no it's cut now, now I'm thinking of cut the cheese. Uh, so it will split the cheese and make it go stringy which is not what we want. So cheese in, so stirring. And this will form the basis of the sauce. So round and round we go. Like that. Cheese is all nice and now melted. We don't add the bacon in just yet because cheese wants to stick to the bacon that's not what we want so we want half the peas in because we did too many peas we'll do something with those tomorrow probably have them with breakfast on toast mm, that'd be nice. so half the peas in for the moment we might add more actually there we go it's better sauce that's looking better actually put some more peas in We'll just do a recipe accordingly. Want some pepper in. So it's kind of bummed up, looking a little bit like risotto. And then bacon in like that. Like that, like that. Mix you around. There we go. That's much better. That's much better than before. So into the bowl and take a picture relatively easy tasty tea for me much better Come on. that's much better much better looking than before rather than the slightly dodgy looking greeny color now you can actually see what it is much nicer pleased with that i do a taste test oh, i've just added the peas to the pasta because i'm going to eat it all so uh, I taste a little bit of it and it was delicious. With the bacon, it was just so good. That's really nice, is that? That is exactly how I wanted it to be. If we mix that in, would you just, would there be too much? Two portions. Two, what we'll do. We'll just put that back in there for a second. And give it a mix around and we'll just have a see. Yeah, those peas. Yeah, that's going to be even better, is that? Yeah, that's going to be even better. So, use all the peas. Two portions. Use all the peas. The peas are cheap. It isn't going to make that much difference cost wise. Look to the dish. Yeah. Much better with all those peas. More peas is good. Yes. That recipe is spot on.